Hi, my name's Sean. So about a year ago, I went to college, and the year before that, I took a year off because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I took a risk, and I went into web development because I thought I might like it. I'm a pretty creative person, so we'll see how this goes. Now it's been a year later, I've finished my first year of college, and I'd like to call myself a freelance web developer. I know there's a lot of people who are looking to get into web development and want to go to school for it, and they're not sure what to expect. So in this video, I want to show everyone what I did in my first year of web development. So this is going to be everything I've learned, everything I've done on my own, and just everything I'm proud of and I want to show you guys. So there's no other way to do it, so let's just hop into it and go to my first ever website. Alright, so this is my first ever website that I ever made. It is not great and it is mostly HTML. There is some CSS, but I feel like I probably used a style tag and not an external file. So there's these links here to other pages, not actually links, don't actually go anywhere. And there's these headers that change when you hover them, and I'm pretty sure this would be an h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, h6. Then we have this text here that we can scroll on, and you hover over it, it changes fonts and colors. Just some beautiful stuff here, it looks really nice. We have this button here, click me for $100, that'll take you to my YouTube channel. And this button here, want to see my fish? Yeah, I do. This is my fish, Nemo. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff down here, really nothing. Uh, I think my teacher just told me to put it there. And then the date is September 12th, 2018. So it's not exactly a year, but we're almost at a year. This is, I think, probably the same website, but it's updated a little bit, changed quite a bit. The reason I think it's the same is because all of this part is the same, just updated. This, I probably did actually use a CSS file for this. I'm assuming that's what I learned here. And there's still this little scroll area. Click me for 100 bucks, which takes you to my YouTube channel. And want to see my fish? There's Nemo. And now there's a picture of PK Subban. Click on that. You just clicked on a picture of P.K. Subban, if you can even read that. And there's this dotted border. <laughs> so yeah, that's the gist of this entire website. Nothing much. So this is my first ever website where I used HTML and CSS from scratch all by myself to create everything. And it looks nice compared to the last website I showed you for sure. <laughs> but that's basically it. Just a bunch of lorem ipsum text and a picture some links. Nothing crazy. Next we had our midterm for CSS, so basically our professor gave us an HTML file and said make it look nice. And this is what I got. So I didn't touch any of the HTML, it is all just CSS. So here we have a form, this is where I was starting to get into some JavaScript. So basically the whole point of this form is that when you click submit, there is an error message. I designed it pretty terribly. I don't know why I would put the form in the middle and then have the error message move it over to the side. That is just terrible, honestly. I don't think anyone would ever do that on a real website, but that's what I did. And also, you get the error message, and then when you type something, it goes away. I mean, that's not crazy, but I thought it was a cool feature. And next we have some more JavaScript. So here it says, enter a number. I'll just put 40, and it counts up to 39. Um, I can click this, and it says guess a number between 1 and 10, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, whatever. I know the answer is 8 because I made this program. Secret answer is 8, and you guessed it. It's pretty simple. And a for loop, I can just enter a minimum value, 20, enter a maximum value, 100, and count up from 20 to 100 by 5s. That's all this does. And so there you go. Um, do while for and while loops. Next we have a JavaScript shopping cart. So we have all these pieces of gum for you to choose from here. And when you click them, they add them to cart instantly. So this one's $1.50, this one's $1.25, this one's a dollar, and this one is 25 cents. And you can clear them all here. You can also just add a bunch. You can just put as many things as you want. So this next one's actually for my graphics design class. I created this logo here for a fake company I created called Polygon. It's created using six different polygons, hexagon, pentagon, square, and a triangle. I thought it was a pretty nice design, and so the inside, you can see that it hovers uh, red. And so there's five different animations here. I actually created five animations because I love to go above and beyond in my classes, especially when I enjoy them as much as this. Yeah, you can see all my different animations. And this last one's probably my favorite. 
Yeah. All right, so that's all of the work and assignments and stuff that I have created over the past year. Now I wanna go into my personal portfolio or my own website and how it's developed over the past 365 days. So first I had this website, it really wasn't pretty. I mean, it's bam, right in your face and it's a little flamboyant, honestly. But when you hover over these, they go side to side depending on which color they are or whatever. It's basically just odd and even. Nothing crazy. These are all my HTML assignments. These are all my JavaScript assignments. A little bit about me, picture of me that changes when you reload the page. The background images change. I thought that was cool. It's all right. Yeah. I got my Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn uh, linked to my resume. And this is probably the coolest part of this is the switch theme button so I can change the CSS file to something a little less in your face, something a little bit easier to look at. So it's just black and white. Then after a month or two, I thought this isn't gonna cut it if I'm gonna wanna get an actual job or anything. So I switched to this. I also created this website for my final assignment in my HTML and CSS class. And then I changed it a bit more so that it was what I actually wanted. I believe originally it had like multiple different pages, but for a portfolio, you only need the one page. People can just scroll down. So that's what this is, just one big scroll. So I have these icons here, home, skills, portfolio, about, and contact. They'll take you to the different parts of the page if that's what you're looking for. So it kind of seems like they're on different pages, but really, it's all one big page. And the only problem with this website that I could never figure out, I could fix anything, if there's any problems, I could fix them, but I cannot figure out this. So you're able to scroll with the words there, but only that much. If you can see the scroll bar on the right, like that but then when I take my mouse off it I can scroll all the way so I don't know something weird is going on there and I'm not able to fix it then we scroll down there's this ball here it basically just scrolls away from your mouse so as you move the mouse around it scrolls away and I can also stop and click on these links because they're all links and so the skills will bring me down to the skills section here I have my personal portfolio, just a bunch of client sites that I made on like Fiverr and stuff. This one's actually my dad's karate club. Um, I created for him. It's just a simple website I just created from scratch. And then a bunch of other stuff I did on Fiverr. Here's a bunch of SVG projects I have. This one you can enter reps three and choose your speed and it does that. You can change the speed for a bit slower. Basically it's just changing CSS variables with JavaScript. I thought it was kind of cool. I think I did an all right job. What do you think? So these here I created for my graphics design class. We were supposed to recreate a logo using text and words. And so that's what I did. I think I went a little bit overboard and I actually did it four times. We we're only supposed to do it once with a pretty basic logo. And I definitely went overboard because I was loving it. It was a lot of fun. I thought this looked really cool. So that's why I did it so much. Then we got these here. You've already seen these and all these and just a little bit about me and a contact form and a footer. That's it. And so finally that brings us to my current website. So my current website I probably started working on about a month and a half ago and then finally uploaded it probably about two weeks ago. The hardest part was just designing it and trying to make it look good and it still doesn't look perfect. I'm not really good artistically. So if somebody could help me out actually, that would be much appreciated. I'm trying to create a parallax effect where it seems like the, tr the mountains are farther away, but that doesn't really seem to be the case. If you want to see what I'm actually going for, we can go, we can go to this. And so this is the effect that I was going for. It's a lot better. Whoever made this clearly knows what they're doing and they're really good at designing because this is just amazing. So that's what I was going for with my website nowhere near as close as good so yeah so we'll click the find out more button and so we have a link to my dad's website and my website for my youtube channel uh and then here we've got some of my poor programming portfolio so like c sharp basically just write a program that prints hello to the screen and then console right line hello world the result hello world the outcome of the program it's basically just a simple console program showing that I can write programs. Write a program that prints a multiplication table up to the number 12. So it's basically just a for loop inside of a for loop that prints 12 and then prints 12 again times two, right? So one to 12 and then one to 12 except for everything times two and then one to 12 except everything times three. 
It's pretty simple, right? And then down here on my website, we've got the different Adobe skills that I have and just like a little bit about them when I started using each of them and stuff like that. And when you click it again, it goes away. And we have a skateboard. <laughs> then down here, the contact form. The width is connected to a CSS variable, which can be controlled by JavaScript. So your scroll position controls the width of the form. So the farther you scroll down, the wider the form gets. <laughs> So that's it, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how I have improved over the past year. I think I've, I've done all right. So if you guys like this, then click that like button, click subscribe for more content just like this, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.